My friends, are you bored of your prayers? Would you like to learn some new prayers that maybe you've never even heard of? You know, sometimes like everything, our prayer life can get stuck in a rut, in a routine where we're praying the same prayers, the same ways, and sometimes we need something new. Well, in today's video, I will go through the top 10 prayers you've never even heard of, at least most of them, and these will be something new and fresh to invigorate your spiritual life. Please join me in today's video. Since we're talking about prayer, we gotta pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Holy Spirit, you lead us in all our prayers and it is through you that we are able to pray, to come to have faith in Jesus and to come to the Father. Please guide this video and all those that hear it. Guide my words and inspire them. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. So friends, this is the channel Uniquely Mary, and my name is Alvaro, and it is a joy to be with you making today's video. As always, if you'd like to support this channel, please pray for me. Pray for all Catholic and Christian YouTubers that we flood YouTube with good and holy content. And also at the end of today's video, I'm gonna have a special announcement for some awesome things, some things to look forward to in this channel, really amazing things that I'm super excited about. And also, you can also support the channel by going to patreon.com and becoming a monthly supporter, or you may go to my Etsy shop, and I'm trying to always increase some of the different merchandise. And so in today's video, I'm super excited because these are prayers that somewhere along my spiritual life, they've helped me, I found them. They just came across, and somehow they were, they became a part of my life. And so I would love to share these top 10 prayers that you've never even heard of, that you need to hear of. Maybe some of them you know. So here we go. Number 10 is the examine prayer. Yes, the examine prayer is a prayer that St. Ignatius gave to his early Jesuits. He wanted them to pray this multiple times a day. And it is, as it sounds, a prayer where we would examine our day it's probably best to pray it at the end of the day. Step one, receive. First of all, by asking God for the light of his grace in doing this prayer. In other words, receive God's help. Step two, return to God gratitude. So first we receive God's grace by asking for it. Second step, we return to God gratitude. With each of these steps, you don't have to complete all five. You can stay in any one of them and really emphasize it. So for instance, if you get stuck, so to speak, in gratitude, St. Ignatius would say, that's an amazing thing. And in fact, step two is the most important one because it focuses on what God is doing. Step three, review the day. And this time, see where your heart has drawn away from God as well as where your heart was being drawn towards God. Now, this is a particularly Ignatian thing. Step four is resolve, especially looking at any places that we were turning away from God to resolve to turn back to God in those moments, as well as in the previous step that you see any moments where you were turning towards God resolving to follow through with that, to say, okay, I felt this excitement about becoming a missionary, now I'm gonna do it. Or I felt this excitement about starting a YouTube channel, now I make the resolution and the resolve to turn towards the Lord and actually start what my heart was being inspired with. The fifth step, renew. Asking God for the grace to make any specific changes and to have hope that these changes will actually take place. So that's number 10, the examine prayer. Number nine is what I like to call the Christmas Novena to the infant Jesus of Prague. So the story behind this, just very summary. So there is a statue of the child Jesus in the city of Prague and, uh, and somehow the statue had lost its hands. 
and there was this Carmelite friar who found the statue. I believe it was be uh, beneath a bunch of rubble. He found it and he felt like the child Jesus told him, if you fix the statue, if you give me back my hands, I will give graces to you. So he fixed the statue and then that statue became a miraculous statue. I've actually been to Prague and I visited that statue because I had this amazing grace granted to me this one Christmas where I prayed the no novena leading up to December 25th, specifically to the infant Jesus of Prague. The Christmas novena I think is one of the most powerful ones and the infant Jesus of Prague, there's a miraculous history to it so you should look it up and find out more about that. Prayer number eight that you probably have not really considered as a prayer, although perhaps you've heard of it. And this is the prayer of St. Dismas from the cross. So Dismas is, St. Dismas is the good thief. That's otherwise what he is known as. He is one of the thieves that was crucified alongside with Jesus. He was probably the first person that had spoken to him those words that guaranteeing him that he was gonna be in heaven, where Jesus says, amen, amen, I tell, tell you, this day you'll be with me in paradise in response to the words that St. Dismas said to Jesus, which were, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. It's a beautiful prayer of mercy that if we pray from the depth of the heart, we can have that same promise that Jesus gave to St. Dismas given to us. Amen, amen, I say to you, this day you'll be with me in paradise. Prayer number seven that you've probably never even considered as a wonderful prayer, and this is from the book of Tobit, chapter eight, verse four. So the book of Tobit is an amazing book and you have to read it. I cannot summarize it here. It's so awesome. So this is this long story of Tobit searching for his love for Sarah. And all these things happen. He's guided by the Archangel Raphael. There's all these crazy things that happen. Sarah had, a, I think she had six other men who were engaged to her. They all died. There was this demon that was disturbing her and causing all this chaos and so the night before they consummate the marriage obviously Tobit is a little bit nervous because he might become the seventh person who was gonna be killed by this demon and he is inspired to pray the following prayer he said and they were kneeling before the bed just before the moment where they are consummating their marriage he said blessed are you O God of our fathers praise be your name forever and ever let the heavens and all your creation praise you forever you made Adam and you gave him his wife Eve to be his help and support. And from these two, the human race descended. You said it is not good for the man to be alone. Let us make him a partner like himself. Now, Lord, you know that I take this wife of mine, not because of lust, but for a noble purpose. Call down your mercy on me and on her and allow us to live together to a happy old age. Amazing prayer. Every newlywed couple should pray that. Really, every couple should pray that. Now, prayer number six. So at some point, I was looking for a prayer to St. Gabriel the Archangel. And I came uh, across this prayer because, you know, there's not really a whole lot out there. We know of the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. And maybe you've even prayed some to St. Raphael because he's the Archangel of Healing. But I found this one to St. Gabriel, and it is so awesome. And I want to share it with you. Prayer number six that you've never heard of, that's so awesome. Here it is. O captain and leader of the armies of heaven, unworthy as we are, we beseech you without ceasing to surround us with your intercession and cover us beneath the shelter of the glory of your ethereal wings. We bend our knee and cry out with perseverance. Deliver us from danger, O prince of the powers of on high. Amen awesome prayer to St. Gabriel the Archangel. I will put it down below so that you can copy and paste it and pray it every day because it is awesome to think how powerful the angels are and yet how little we pray to them. Well, now we have this beautiful prayer to St. Gabriel the Archangel that he may protect you and guide you. Prayer number five, and this is a Latin prayer, probably on something that you have on the St. Benedict medal and St. Benedict crucifix. So this is a prayer that you need to memorize and it is in Latin. Vade retro Satanas, numquan sade mihivana, sunt mala que libas, ipse venena vivas. And it means this, be gone Satan, do not offer to me your vanity. It is evil what you are giving to me, drink the poison yourself. Prayer number four, and this is one of my favorite prayers, Maybe you've heard it, but you need to be reminded of this amazing prayer that was also given 
by an angel. The Fatima angel prayer that was given to Lucia, Jacinta, and Francisco. And what is amazing about this prayer was this was one of the early prayers that they were taught about a year before they actually encountered the Blessed Mother. And they prayed it so much they would prostrate themselves almost and they would place their their forehead to the ground in the same way that uh, the guardian angel of Portugal, the angel of peace, would pray. So he would pray like that. He would place his forehead to the ground, they would imitate him, and they would pray with such intensity. Here it is. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. And I ask pardon for those that do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. Now we're into the top three, number three. And this is a prayer from the diary of St. Faustina. You know, we're not often uh, have the grace of being given from other saints prayers when we receive the Eucharist. And one day I was reading the diary of St. Faustina and I saw this prayer that she would have after she would receive Holy Communion. And I thought, this is amazing. We need prayers like this. We need prayers from the saints, especially to help us receive communion more worthily. This is from the diary of... Uh, Divine Mercy, paragraph 1089. Jesus, may your pure and healthy blood circulate in my poor ailing organism, and may your pure and healthy body transform my weak, unhealthy body, and may a healthy and vigorous life flowing once again within me, if it is truly your holy will. Amen. Prayer number two top 10 prayers that you've never heard. This is number two. So I found this prayer when I went to Siena. I went to Siena with my family. And of course, I had to go see where St. Catherine of Siena was, where she was buried. And they have her head there. Her body is in Rome. I don't know why they did that, but that's what they did. And when I was at the church of St. Catherine of Siena, I found this prayer card. And this was a prayer to the Holy Spirit. It's actually to the Holy Trinity that she had written when she was a child after she miraculously learned to write. And when I read this prayer, I thought, gosh, this prayer is amazing. It is so awesome. So here it is. And it goes like this. Holy Spirit, come into my heart. By your power, I journey to you, O God. Grant me charity with fear. Protect me, O Christ, from every evil thought. And warm me with your sweet love so that every burden may seem light to me. My Holy Father and my sweet Lord, Grant that I may always and in every endeavor, Christ's love, Christ's love. Amen. Last prayer. I know this is a long video, but prayer can never, ever be too long. It's always awesome. Now, this prayer is magnificent. You probably pray it, but not in the language that I'm going to teach it to you. Where did I get this prayer? And why is this prayer the number one prayer top of the top 10 prayers that you've never even heard of? And it is because, okay, so this is from the conversion story of, I can't remember his name right now, but he was a Harvard professor. He was a convert from Judaism to the Catholic faith. He had the Blessed Mother appear to him. First he had Jesus appear to him, but he didn't know who it was. He thought it was just God. He didn't realize that it was specifically Jesus Christ. And then he had the Blessed Mother appear to him about a year later. And in his conversation with him, he asked her, what was your favorite prayer? And he recite, she recited a prayer that was in Portuguese of all languages. And he didn't know the prayer at all. He didn't want to ask what it was. And so he just kind of remembered the first part of it. He went to a Portuguese woman, told her the prayer. And she said, oh, it's this prayer. Well, it turned out that she said that her favorite prayer was the prayer on the miraculous medal. I always have mine right here. You need to get yours as well. But it was in Portuguese, which I thought was, when I heard that video for the first time, I thought, wow, that's the Blessed Mother's favorite prayer. Although she also said she loves all prayers to her. And the Portuguese version of this prayer, which in English it's, O Mary conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. Well, the Portuguese version is this. O Maria concebida sem pecado, Rogai por nos que recorremos a vos. So those were the top 10 prayers that you've never even heard of, probably are not part of your repertoire. Well, now they are. I will be traveling this summer to holy places and I'll be making videos about it because I love traveling. I want travel to be part of this channel. Because of COVID, I have not been able to travel very much, but 
So in June and in July, I'll be traveling with my family and with my wife. In June, I'll be going to New Mexico to uh, see a few holy sites that are there, specifically the staircase of Loreto that was built by St. Joseph. There's a miraculous staircase in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And we're also gonna be staying at a uh, Our Lady Guadalupe Monastery in Pecos, New Mexico. So I'm excited about that holy place. So there'll be those two holy sites as well as we'll be visiting the Holy Shrine of Chimayo and a uh, the oldest church in the United States, San Miguel. But I'm super excited about July. In July, with my wife and my baby daughter, we're going to be going to Turkey. Yes, we're going to go to visit the House of the Blessed Mother. The Blessed Mother lived in Ephesus for about nine years. St. John was there, and the apostles would go and visit her there. And her house was, um, after she left, it was somewhat abandoned. Only the locals knew about it. And a, uh, a nun, through the writings of Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, found her house in the mid to late 1800s. And that area was restored, and it was restored and now it's a holy shrine where many, many thousands, not millions of people go each year. I'm gonna go at the end of July to visit where the Blessed Mother lived in Ephesus, the documented house of the Blessed Mother. I'm so excited to go there and I'm gonna document the whole trip. I'm gonna to go to Istanbul and then to Izmir, which is near the town where Ephesus is. So I'm so excited. I cannot wait for you to join me. We're gonna be so blessed. You're gonna be so blessed. Can't wait to share more about it. So thank you for joining me in today's video, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a beautiful day.